This talk is about my fight to change healthcare through focusing on what we now are calling precision health. It begins with risk assessment at all stages of life, including at the time of conception. I'm convinced that a future that is gonna involve precision health will be the right way to approach healthcare and will be fundamental to our changing of how we deal with health and disease today. He would often start lab meeting by saying, I want you to all remember why we're here. And if anyone's forgotten, I want you to let me know uh, and come over to the clinic with me. Because this morning I saw patients that were, you know, suffering. And there are real people at the other side of this that we're trying to help. This is why we're here. Sam's commitment is to the betterment of humanity. He would rather medicine not be so involved in healing the sick, but rather preventing people from getting sick in the first place. I was inspired by Sam the day we came together. I mean, you watch this natural curiosity of his. You watch him work so hard. I mean, he used to sleep on the PET scanner all through the night to be there. Now, I work hard. Sam works harder, and why? Because he does what he loves to do with those he loves to do it with. He's just relentless. He is someone you really can't box into any one area. He trained as a biomathematician in his early career, doing his PhD, but then became an MD, and from there really just branched out into all of these different areas and fathered the field of molecular imaging, which has changed how we do medicine and how we actually diagnose and help people. Sam's family immigrated to the U.S. when Sam was five, and they came from India, and they're a wonderful family. And they taught this young boy the right things about life, to work hard, extremely work hard, and to be honest and sincere. I think he entered college at 15 and entered medical school at 18. He came with all the passion and interest in the world. He applied to medical school, but at that time they just had two boxes, MD, MD, PhD. And they put his application in the MD, PhD program. And it was fortuitous, serendipity. It was in that environment where he had to figure out how do you put together math, physics, and nuclear medicine? Yeah, you know, there's an old saying that there's no elevator to success. You have to take stairs. Sam took those stairs where he created mathematical relevance, and trace genetic modeling, medical decision making, integrated that into PET, integrated it into his life as a physician. In 1997, there was an FDA Modernization Act. In that law, the FDA would now have to properly treat PET as a tracer technique, not a drug. Well, we got through that, and then we faced reimbursement. He's credited with being one of the individuals that helped get the government to agree to reimburse for PET imaging. With the FDA approval and reimbursement, they built the foundation for PET to become a clinical reality worldwide. He finished his MD, PhD, and I recruited him into my faculty. He was a young assistant professor, and he came to me one day and told me he did not believe that people would be interested in his bringing physics and, and math and nuclear medicine together, that they would not have any interest in his work. I said, Sam Gambier, you are bright, exciting, smart, and extremely hardworking and you have a vision of the world that you see. They will not only be interested in what you create, you will change our field. He was working closely with Michael Phelps, who's an absolute giant in the field, someone who is an incredible innovator and really created PET imaging, positron emission tomography, which has really changed the game for diagnosing cancer. But from there, he wasn't satisfied. He thought, well, what else can we do with imaging? He became more and more and more a translational scientist. 
where he was now engaging many different sciences and many different medical specialties, but always focused on how do I get them to invent and discover with me and change medicine. The uh, radiology department wanted to develop a major program in molecular imaging. We wanted to attract a, a world-renowned person to lead that effort. And I was asked to chair the search committee that ended up recruiting Sam Gambier. Sam is incredibly broad scientifically. He can carry on a conversation at the physics, engineering, mathematics aspect of things, but also at the biology end of things and the clinical medicine. I've seen so many wonderful ideas born out of his ability to reach across to different disciplines and departments and to leverage everyone's skills and thoughts and ideas. Now that's also something about the way Sam thinks. Sam does mental experiments. They're called what if. So what if I did this? What do I think would happen? Seeing the way he approaches questions and problems made me also approach my science and the questions I cared about differently. He would often say, go to a seminar in another department or speak to these people in you know, a completely different field and learn how they're doing it. In academics, we separate all these things, right? In Sam's life, they're in one culture. He believes in all of them. He works to integrate one to another. They're all just part of his great big family. Early detection of disease, and especially related to cancer, has been a very important central focus of his work. He was always in search of how can we detect disease early? How do we find a way to know that this is beginning to occur and change? The model at the Canary Foundation was to bring scientists together from very different fields that traditionally wouldn't talk to each other and allow them to share ideas, data, and jointly plan experiments that would help advance the field of early cancer detection. Dr. Gambier had really latched onto and thought, of, thought was important is that molecular changes in your body occur far earlier than a structural change. The fewer the number of rogue cancer cells, the less signal they produce. So it's like trying to find something in your body that is present in smaller and smaller and smaller quantities. It's one thing to find a tumor when it's the size of an orange. It's another thing to find a tumor when it's the size of a raisin. What he helped to develop from multiple angles is these imaging technologies that allow us to scan a whole person or a part of a person and allow us to see these molecular changes that can help detect disease far earlier. My research is always focused in an area that brings together advances in cell and molecular biology with that of biomedical imaging. We have worked for years on building molecular spies that are injected into your body these spies wander around, kind of doing a house-to-house -house search or a cell-to-cell -cell search, looking for molecular errors. When they find those molecular errors, they send a signal that comes out of your body that we build scanners that can detect. Then we form an image of the molecular signals from inside your body. And what that is, is the ability to really study detect, visualize, and understand biochemical and cellular events in living subjects, which people haven't been able to do before. So unlike traditional imaging, which is about the anatomy of your body, we develop molecular imaging tools that help us pinpoint very early molecular problems in your cells that are telltale signs of early disease. Sam has now used his technique that he pioneered many, many years ago, this reporter pet imaging, the molecular spies, to track immunotherapy. These cells are an actual therapy that help fight off the cancer. The approach that Sam created, these reporter pet imaging strategies, allow us to track those cells with precision and see 
what they're doing in the brain or elsewhere. Sam is sought after for his, his expertise, his knowledge, but also for his ability to envision the future and where we as a field should be going. He would rather fail at true discovery and invention than succeed on the average. He believes that if he works hard enough, he can create and make real the thing he sees in his mind. He was thinking ahead, way ahead, for a long time. And he thought, let's start thinking about how we can integrate what people are learning in the sort of small device or point of care type detection space. If you're aiming to get early detection of disease, uh, by definition, it's detection before the person even knows that they have a disease. You want to be making these measurements in a non-intrusive way um, without the person's uh, daily uh, life activities being affected. He thought, what are all the things you just do passively in your day-to-day -day life that we could collect data on? Imagine that during your annual doctor's visit that you go in for what would be other tests, a physical exam, a simple blood test for cholesterol, but at the same time that blood test would be for biomarkers that may be present in your blood and would indicate that you may have an early cancer. Actually being able to detect the earliest signs of any sort of disease using every kind of method we have available to us, whether it's monitoring your sleep, whether it's looking in the mirror in the morning and having your mirror detect changes in your facial expression. He'll say, imagine if you could be in your shower and being scanned, a whole body scan. Like, no one thinks like that. Sam has been and is one of the people against whom I try to not measure myself uh, because I'll lose. There are these people that we're very fortunate to come across in life who are just so amazing uh, that they're inspiring in multiple ways. And he's one of those. I've never had a mentor like him and I, nor did I know it was possible for somebody to be such a brilliant scientist and really lead in his scientific boldness and sort of teaching me to how to tackle questions, but also just as a lovely human as well, somebody who clearly cares so deeply about all of his people in the lab, all of his students are like his children, basically. And we all felt like that and still do to this day. He's really like a, a dad to us. He touches people's lives as he goes. You know, most people, you walk right by you, but not Sam. And Sam has a purpose. How could I help them to do something? How could they help me? He's on a mission. This brings me to Millen. What motivates me is knowing that if he had been born 100 years from now, the tools of precision health would have possibly allowed him to live much, much longer. I remain optimistic that the fundamental basic science that we all continue to do leads to new technologies that will help re-engineer our own bodies so that we can detect disease early. Welcome to the revolution.